Hi fellas, welcome back to the next section. Credit risk detection and prediction. Descriptive analytics. In the last two sections, you saw some interesting problems revolving around the retail and e-commerce domains. In this section and the next one, we'll be tackling a new problem related to the financial domain. Now we move on to the first video of this section, understanding credit risk. Before we start tackling our challenge, it will be useful to get an idea of the different types of analytics which broadly encompass the data science domain. We can broadly classify analytics into four different types which are Descriptive analytics. This is what we use when we have some data to analyze. We start with looking at the different attributes of the data, extract meaningful features, and use statistics and visualizations to understand what has already happened. The main aim of descriptive analytics is to get a broad idea of what kind of data we're dealing with and summarize what's happened in the past. Above almost 80% of all analytics in the businesses today are descriptive. Diagnostic analytics. This is sometimes clubbed together with descriptive analytics. Here, the main objective is to delve deeper into the data to find specific patterns and answer questions such as why did this occur? Usually, it involves root cause analysis to come up with the root of why something happened and what were the main factors involved during its occurrence. Sometimes techniques such as regression modeling help in achieving this. Predictive analytics. This is the final step in any analytics pipeline. Once you've built consistent and stable predictive models with a good flow of clean data for predictions, you can build systems which utilize this and start prescribing actions which you might take to improve your business. Do remember that predictive modeling can only predict what might happen in the future because all models are probabilistic in nature and nothing is 100% certain. Prescriptive analytics. This is the final step in any analytics pipeline if you're in the stage that you've built consistent predictive models with a good flow of clean data such that you're able to predict what might happen in the future. Then you can build systems which utilize this and start prescribing actions which you might take to improve your business. Do remember that you need working predictive models with good data and an excellent feedback mechanism to achieve this. Most organizations do a lot of descriptive analytics and some amount of predictive analytics. However, it's really difficult to implement prescriptive analytics due to the ever-changing business conditions and data streams and problems associated with that, the most common one being data sanitization issues. What is credit risk? We've been using this term credit risk since the start of this section and many of you might be wondering exactly what does this mean, even though you might have guessed after reading the previous section. The standard definition of credit risk is the risk of defaulting on a debt which takes place due to the borrower failing to make the required debt payments in time. This risk is taken by the lender, since the lender incurs losses of both the principal amount as well as the interest on it. In our case, we'll be dealing with a bank which acts as the financial organisation, giving out loans to customers who apply for them. Hence, customers who might default on a loan payment would be credit risks for the bank. By analysing customer data and applying machine learning algorithms on it, the bank will be able to predict in advance which customers may be potential credit risks. This will help in risk mitigation and in minimising losses by not giving away loans to customers who could be credit risks for the bank. The first step in our data analysis pipeline is to get the data set. We'll be using data analysis and machine learning techniques to analyse financial data from a German bank. We've actually cleaned the data and provided meaningful names to the data attributes, and you can check that out by opening the german underscore credit underscore dataset dot csv file. You can download the data and then load it using the read command. Then check the class of the dataset. It is data frame, and it should be data frame only. Next, let's get a quick peek at the data. The result shows the first six rows of the data. Each column indicates an attribute of the dataset. We'll be focusing on each attribute in more detail. To get detailed information about the dataset and its attributes, you can use the STR code snippet. The code will enable you to get a quick look at the total number of data points you're dealing with, which includes the number of records, the number of attributes, and the detailed information about each attribute including things such as attribute name, type, and some samples of attribute values. Using this, we can get a good idea about the different attributes and their data types, so that we know what transformations to apply onto them, and what statistical methods to use during descriptive analytics. 
From the output, you can see that our dataset has a total of 1,000 records, where each record deals with data points pertaining to one bank customer. Each record has various data points or attributes describing the data, and we have a total of 21 attributes for each record. The data type and sample values for each attribute are also shown. That's a good start.